When the world stopped in its tracks in early 2020, pets became an even bigger part of our lives. They became our exercise partners, dinner dates, and movie marathon companions. They were the champs at staying at home, and they brought calmness and comfort to many households. At first, Americans embraced quarantine, a two-week break inside with their family and furry companions. And then, things began to change forever. By early April, people wanted help with resources. Some were without a paycheck, asking for food assistance. We had clergy calling to see if we could house pets of COVID patients if need be. And folks began to panic about if their pet could make them sick. In the beginning, staff wasn't even tracking services. I think we were just trying to help create some sense of security, to help however we could and to be able to say, we are here for you. And while many were at home, the Heartland team was on the forefront of animal welfare, still operating an entire shelter despite asking volunteers to stay home. Heartland shut down the public doors in mid-March, but realized quickly that animal welfare doesn't stop for a pandemic. From March and into late May, the shelter operated with limited hands, only staff working split shifts. An initial flood of foster homes took animals home and kept them safe, so our shelter team continued to work the mission of helping great pets. Heartland quickly partnered with the Wakpa Waste Animal Shelter on the Cheyenne River after they lost all their transport options. We extended our help to local rescues and in need, and we've been able to transfer over 90 animals to Heartland so far in 2020. This included timid ones like Megara that needed socialization, ready to adopt ones like tamale, ones that needed spayed or neutered, and some sick ones. We tackled five cases of mange and 12 cases of exposures to parvo, and at its worst, we hospitalized a puppy for seven days. We took dogs like Brock from places like California, where a misunderstood bite hold put him on a euthanasia list unless someone else helped. We helped more sick and injured cats than we've ever seen in one summer both as owned animals and stray surrenders via our relationship with the City of Yankton Animal Control. Our veterinary and medical costs between January and September totaled $34,000 alone. We handed out food and pet supplies, averaging about 600 pounds a week, or a 300% increase over 2019. As folks lost housing, we helped with temporary holding of their pets, and we provided pet supplies when they were ready to take them back. We advocated for them to keep their pets. And most importantly, we just listened. We picked up the phone, we navigated through crisis, we educated facilities on pet exposures to the illness. We offered encouragement, and in the span of three weeks in early June, we had over 150 cats and kittens placed on our waiting list. It's a number that's unmanageable, and we couldn't ignore it. So again, we got creative and wrote grants. We began offering spay and neuter clinics for cats and litters of older kittens. We worked with folks to trust our mission in TNR. We also began trusting folks to rehome their own cats with our help of medical and veterinary services. We've provided surgeries to over 100 community pets this summer. And we continue to offer this as a solution for pet owners. And finally, we just advocated for our shelter pets. We provided streamlined adoption services and our average length of stay for an animal at Heartland went from 32 days in 2019 to 25.1 in 2020. We were able to adopt paired cats multiple times, which usually seems impossible. We found great homes for the older pets and the younger. We were understanding when folks adopted an animal and returned it if they realized it just wouldn't work. And we made adoptions a success despite the challenges. And slowly, we're beginning the new normal of animal welfare. Our volunteers are beginning to come back, which means more animals are living back in the shelter. We've learned a lot about disease control and prevention, in some cases because we lived through it this year. Our amazing staff in foster homes swallowed their stress and pushed through some pretty scary situations. We adapted policies and we're ready for tomorrow. COVID-19 will change shelter relationships forever. Intake diversion and community programming has become more important than ever before. And to keep with trends and support our community, we must prepare to spend a portion of our funding on shelter prevention and diversion. 
We must focus to meet pets and people where they are and to serve them to the best of our abilities. And we know that before they land in the permanent home, many of those pets will rely on us for shelter systems and foster homes will meet their needs. And today we're asking for your help to continue serving those pets in care. So if you can, please donate now. A general donation to our program supports medical care, which is top notch for shelters in our region. We need to raise $40,000 in October to continue our awesome operations here at Heartland. As a supporter, you should be proud of the partnerships and Heartland's work to serve the public by putting materials and programming into the hands of those who need it. I am humbled and inspired by the resilience of our staff and our volunteers and our clients as we take on a new era in animal welfare. And I hope you are proud too. Our role will be to help families and pets weather any storm. We will be ready for the next chapter, whatever needs become identified, but only with your support. Please donate now.